It's the old Doctor Who show, episode number 30, the Dostonese of the Tazis. Go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. You couldn't control my mind before, and you certainly can't control it now. Would you like a joke, baby? The TARDIS, when working properly, is capable of many amazing things. The first polarity of the neutron flow is that the TARDIS will be free of the force field. But the TARDIS is more than a machine. It's a genetic, but a person. The resulting reaction is fighting. Are you ready? It's the old Doctor Who show, your tri-weekly classic Doctor Who review podcast. I'm your host, Eric Grissom, and as always, I'm joined by... Your other co-host, Dan Johnson. Two, uh, two fellas here to talk about Destiny and Daleks and what have you. How have you been in the last three weeks, Dan? Oh, just delightful. Everything's great. Summer's winding down. Kind of stinks. Other than that, things are good. That's good. Yeah. How about you some guys? Some guy tried to fight me. Um, some guy tried to fight me uh, yesterday. No, two days ago. Uh-huh. Cause he didn't like my hair. Really? Yeah, that was a weird thing. So that still happens. So uh, how is junior high? high? Junior high still still going well for you? I it felt exactly <laughs> like uh, being in junior high. Did I you? Felt, it was the weirdest thing. And the guy, he's like, I don't know. He's always giving me a hard time. It's this guy at the beach, <laughs> oh, and for some reason he just kept like pushing. And I was like, I don't know why you're obsessed with my hair. And that was like a trigger for him. He was like, I am not obsessed with you. And then it was a weird thing. Aww. And then he starts talking about uh, we want to fight, and he's like, my friend's here, and he's like one hit somebody. And it's like, if anybody's ever seen me, we don't need two people against me. <laughs> I mean, you could pretty much hold yourself. Uh, and pretty much know, anyone's going gonna, gonna to be one hit. So, right. yeah, I feel the same. So that was a weird, uh, uncomfortable thing. Did but you yeah, turn it felt around? just like being in high school. Yeah, did you turn around, and, and behind you were like gym lockers? All of a sudden, it was, oh like, God, it was uh, like Silent Hill, yeah. and like the reality just falls away, and it's just lockers and and the smell of old socks or whatever. Oh, uh, that's that's great. I yeah, wish it was I... weird. And then he was like, "Oh, I'm just kidding. Wink at me to let me." He's like, "Wink at you." It's like this weird. Wait, was he thing. being was he being like held hostage? Was was there someone with a know. gun I, pointed I, I at his wife's that head? Was it. Yeah, I hope it's that he was being held hostage. What, was he aware that you were all middle aged men? Uh, he should have been. I mean, he was even older than me. It's I mean, he pretty was obvious. Probably in his fifties, <laughs> it's just so weird. It's like you you try to go through life and just not interact with people or make any way, and they they yeah. find you and they just invade your space, and you you have to just deal with it. That's so insane. weird. I think at this point in my life, being in my forties, that I was past this. Maybe it never goes nope. away. It never stopped. Wait, did you uh, start off by telling him that you host a classic Doctor Who podcast? I, that was my opener. <laughs> I was like, oh, would you like to... I'm here to talk about, uh, you know... Nerd! Okay. Yeah, nerd. Uh, he opened up. We were listening to some music like, turn off this uh, Depeche Mode junk. We weren't even listening to Depeche Mode, and I like Depeche Mode. Sure, I'll play right. Depeche Mode any, any minute of the Drop day. the hat. But it wasn't even what we were listening So it was like already like... I don't know what was going on wow. with this guy. If he was sort of dealing with things on his own, or I don't know. No, no, no. That, Clearly, that he story. had no problems whatsoever. Nothing was about him. Was people a- just, all people are garbage. That's it. It's like humans are garbage. Except for everyone listening to this podcast. Not all humans, hashtag. Yeah, not all. Well, pretty much all humans. <laughs> uh, so what's what's going on with you? You said uh, good no, summer? It's good summer. Things are great. I mean, whatever. I'm just looking forward back to, to to winter already. I just want to go skiing. That's like all I want to do. So yeah, I'm not a big summer. Per- I'm not even a big beach summer. Per- I'm sort of done with it. I Which just is want funny because you live so close to the shore. But yeah, well, my wife is, and like my kids like it, yeah. so I sort of get there. And I've warmed up considerably to the ocean, whereas I wouldn't even go in it because I'm afraid of the ocean and everything in it. But you've grown up near the ocean like your entire yeah. life, right? I saw Jaws at a young age. Sure. Because my dad was just hands off parenting, so like the things that I was watching at a young age, uh, you know, soft core pornography, that was probably uh, <laughs> films that I was like, Dad, I don't That's think okay. I'm, this is, I don't think this is appropriate. But yeah, I had seen Jaws. I was probably like five, and yeah. that completely just ruined the ocean for me. I think forever. I definitely had a summer like that, and I would spend you know a week or two every one crazy summer. Yes. Yeah, Nah, right. Still not one of my favorites, though. I hate That's to say good. it. I mean, I like one crazy summer. Mm. 
All right. Well, let's just not talk. That's Dan. uh, Something Savage, right? Huh? I was going to say Dan Savage. It's not Dan Savage. But the guy that did that, because he also did um, Better Off Dead. Right. Which I like a whole lot better. Right. Yeah, yeah. But go, what anyway, were you saying? No, you this, had a, a nothing, one no, I was just saying like I would always go, to, go to the race. shore as well uh, for like a week or two. I didn't live near it, but um, yeah, I remember one summer just being terrified because of Jaws. And you actually can see sharks from the Jersey Beach sometimes, so that is yeah. a little. I get that. Uh, that's why. You anyway, put your, we're not here to talk about no, that's, sharks. All I want to say is safety tip: throw your kids out in front of you first, then you're you're fine. You'll be okay. Yeah, let's take the little ones. Called, it's called Chum in the Waters. Chum in the Waters. <laughs> with, with the little ones. Yep. Uh, okay, so we talk about Destiny of the Doll. Oh, no, wait. We have uh, oh. listener mail yes. to, to view before I skip over it. Yeah. I uh, want to thank uh, Lance. Fact checker alert. Yeah, we got Fact checker <laughs> alert. We're going to have to come up with theme music for, for Lance. But uh, Lance, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for the email. Uh, that's really fantastic. So um, super listener, super fan. Uh, Lance uh, wrote into us with some information about some corrections or clarifications from some past episodes. I mean, if someone was to do that for every episode we've done, it would just take years to get through that because we make lots of mistakes. Uh, but I wanted to point out one that he had uh, mentioned. It was from uh, the Armageddon Factor. So pick that one because it's recent in our uh, feed here. Yep. We had asked, um, like, how how big in the in England was Tom Baker like how much control did he have over um what happened on the set what happened with the characters you hear these stories about like wanting rewrites and things like that well Lance actually did the homework for us and uh did some uh checking for us um and TLDR Tom Baker was huge uh big 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 star so what's interesting I think is uh Lance points us to uh the fact that this story and the next one uh, that we're doing, Destiny of the Daleks and City of Death, have the highest ratings of the entire show to date. Uh, from the uh, source that he was looking at, the next highest one, at least in the modern era that comes after this, is uh, Voyage of the Damned, which is interesting. It doesn't quite reach the same heights, but I think Kylie Minogue had a lot to do with that one. So Yeah, that's a strange. I, I, did a str- not know I would never that. have guessed that that, was, that would be it. I mean, it was a Christmas special, so those right. tend to be higher anyway, but still, that was that was surprising to me. Um, but yeah, so these these stories were gigantic, um, and he was you know the, the show was kind of based around at this point around uh, Tom Baker. So um, Lance says that uh, based on the interviews that he's seen, uh, it does seem that Tom was pretty uh, possessive of the show because you know it was pretty much uh, he would be the one that has most to lose since he kind of put everything on the line for all these years to be the the face of the show. Um, and a lot of the negative stories that you hear were mostly things about the, the script itself. He just wanted the script to be better rather than, uh, issues working with, uh, co-stars. Um, Elizabeth Slayton says she, she always enjoyed working with him. Um, Romana too, who we see in this episode. Yeah, they dated, right? Uh, they got married. Or married. They They got got married. married. So I guess they liked each other at least for a little while. Uh, they didn't stay married too long. Um, yeah. So... He was a big enough star uh, to warrant all of these uh, requests or demands for script changes because he wanted to make the show better, and he's the one that had everything to lose. So, yeah, I would uh, kind of agree with that. If someone wanted to make the show better and it wasn't just about, like, hey, I don't have enough lines, then... Yeah, I, I always remember hearing, though, that he just wasn't even reading the scripts until, like, minutes before he I went really on. doubt I don't that know that's if the that's case, true. though. He Maybe that's seem... where it goes because to... we've been doing him for so long. To me, I mean... The amount of – and maybe, maybe hey, if he was able to read it right before and do these performances, then that makes him an even more incredible actor. But I think the nuance he brings to a lot of the line readings, um, I mean, especially the, the humor bits that he does, the little back and forth, even throwaway lines, he puts so much into them. So if he's able to do that off the cuff, then amazing. But he's I doubt best. that that's the case. I think that he really prepared. So – that's All right. Cool. Is there anything else in that uh, email there, Dan? Uh, some of the cool stuff, but uh, as it pertains to this, no. But thank you, Lance. That's really awesome. I look forward to getting a lot wrong in this episode. Yeah, and I so think you Lance, correct us you, next time. Lance also included TV listings for yeah. this, so I'll put those in the show notes. Definitely or on the post. It's so it's so interesting because so, this was 1979. Uh, 
coming into 80, coming up on 80 real quick here. So to see. Uh, yeah, we always feel against, like we've been in 79 for, for quite some time. It does, actually. I mean, I think it probably felt that way for people living through the 70s. But, uh, but, um, bump. Bump. Um, so anyway, so yeah, we'll put those those um, scans up from TV Guide or wherever it was from. Yep. Is there one you want to highlight, or can we get to the destiny, our destiny, and fulfill ah, our destiny? Let's go fulfill our of dest- the Daleks. D- d- destiny. All right, hit the button and take us in. Got it. Well, now, I told you a little bit about myself. What about you? What brings you... What, what's this planet called, by the way? You don't know. No, no, I had a little trouble with my direction. Equipment. You made a forced landing. Yes, well, something of the sort. Not a world one would visit from choice. No. The planet is listed in our star catalogue as D5 Gamma Z Alpha. Well, that's not much help. See, I'm terribly old-fashioned. I prefer names. I believe the planet is called Scaro. Scaro? You know it. The nature of our mission is secret. You'll understand, I'm sure. No, I don't understand. Why are you here on Scaro? All right, this is Destiny of the Daleks. This is 1979, written by Terry Nation. Although there's many <gasps> claims that Douglas Adams had massively rewritten this episode. He was the script uh, editor, so that does make sense. Yeah, the yeah. director in the commentary had said as much as like 90 plus percent of the script had been rewritten. This is la- Terry Nation's last story that he does for Doctor Who, um, maybe because they rewrote that much of it. Who knows? Um, it's directed by Ken Grieve. After losing his position as a minor league pitcher, the Doctor learns that his great uncle has left him three hundred million to inherit it. The Doctor and Romana must spend thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> is this the plot to I'm Bruce's sorry. millions? <laughs> I'm sorry, I've gotten the. Uh, the uh, description of Brewster's Millions uh, mixed up with my Doctor Who notes. Dude, I'm so glad that I actually knew what that was. And I could see Richard Pryor the whole time. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Wait, I didn't, rem- I didn't remember that Pryor, the character, was uh, an ex-baseball player. Yeah, was remember, because that- he buys the team. He, he oh. makes... Oh. Well, he, I think he was like a minor league yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. And that his dream was they were going to the Yankees. Up again. Okay. Yep. Oh, man, that's fantastic. Uh, okay. In all seriousness, after an impromptu regeneration by Romana, she and the Doctor land on the planet Scaro, where they discover the Daleks are using human slaves to search the planet for their creator, Davros, in the hopes that he may give them the edge they so need in defeating their enemy, the Mavellans, an army of androgynous solid gold dancing robots. And that is pretty much <laughs> the destiny of the Daleks. Although that first story sounds pretty good, too, about the $300 million. I would actually... I'm going to go watch that now. Uh, we'll be yeah. right back. So what did you think of Destiny of the Daleks, Dan? We'll start there. I think there's a lot to talk about, but overall, I think it's a, a really lot. good episode. Um, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, I mean... I mean, the- just the story. From the story, purely uh, story perspective, I like, you know, bringing back and continuing the overall um, narrative of the Daleks. Uh, bringing back Davros was amazing. Having... Two. Well, amazing with an asterisk next to it. Yes. Also, we will, I'm terrible. just talking about. <laughs> yes, I'm just talking about from pure pure story, like the right. narrative that well, they're trying to hit. Sure, these. Yes, yes. But let's talk about the obviously the thing that opens this, which I was. Yeah. I completely called it last last uh, old Doctor Who show. Yeah. Where I said it was going to be like a one off. It was a little bit more than a one off line about the regeneration of Romana into Princess Romana. But it really was, I mean, it was just weird. I mean, it made no sense to start. me. Like, it made sense to uh, you? No, no, it made, it made oh, okay. no sense as to why or, yeah. Well, not, yeah, right. Not that long ago, we have a whole episode, The Deadly Assassin, which establishes that whole number of rege- regenerations that a uh, Time Lord has. Does each one of these, because she goes through four or five bodies in like uh purely a comic yes. moment that I, I i'm assuming douglas adams was behind right where she keeps changing forms until she 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 gets back to uh princess what was her name princess mononoke mononoke <laughs> until she becomes princess mononoke again does each one of those count as a generation or regeneration right can you can time lords pick their form it doesn't just happen right 
Like it was all very weird. Okay. Like I, so so part of this is difficult because we're in 1979 where some of the stuff hasn't been solved yet. And but for us, we've seen stuff in the new Who that explains or even actually makes things more difficult. So Time Lords are given a finite number of regenerations, though that number, depending on where we are in this series, kind of fluctuates a little bit. Time Lords can be granted additional regeneration cycles, as we've seen with the Eleventh Doctor and New right. Who. But this is like a no- this nonchalant. Is just, yeah. But so then another. I, so I was reading about this as well, and it seems. You know, if we if we take a look at canon now and kind of retrofit that, um, we can say that when a Time Lord is regenerating, they have a window of time where, like, the Tenth Doctor regenerated a hand, uh, which you know became pivotal in right. New Who. So there's there's things they can do while they're in their generation cycle, um, usually just little plot devices for that episode, but that that may explain some of this. So maybe she was regenerating and these are all part of that one regeneration because she was in the regeneration cycle. Who knows? Yeah, it was Which just is weird. Obviously, I mean, they didn't care. They didn't think about it that much. They had probably the script written and, yeah. you know, uh, Mary Tam is gone. So they And I would assume this, this, is, this would be like Romana, the initial Romana, is probably her first body because she's just out of the academy. She's fair. Right, you know, okay. I wouldn't think that she's had... And so even if she no, did, but if you were yeah, if you were using, if you only get a certain amount of them, and you're just for a laugh, them around just for for laugh for a cheap laugh, <laughs> it's like going too far. Seems I think. odd. Um, but anyway, but the, also, in but, terms of costume, though, well, can we just go back just more yeah. about like the regeneration itself? We've never, we've only ever seen the Doctor regenerating or any time we're regenerating due to imminent death. Mm-hmm. So. What happened to Romana? Yeah, they don't say. She just fe- almost like she just felt like it. Yeah. Like there was no crisis. It's just weird. Like you, you know, it did. It could have started with the TARDIS crashing, and then he's alive, and then I sees can someone else how, there. But that sets a tone that would probably, from just a story perspective, like now here's the thing we have to deal with. It's probably going to take an entire episode just to get no, through. Yeah, it. I get it. So that's I, hard. Ideally, yeah, but Mary Tam like would have came back for the first. But I have a throwaway line like. Right. I can't weird. believe you fell over and and stabbed yourself with the scissors. I told you not to run with like just something stupid to like like why does she? But maybe I. So I've never seen any other example where it's the specifically the doctor, but I guess any time lord has regenerated without uh, having some sort of crisis. So Lance, if you have any information, I'm going to call on you to find out. Uh, has this happened before, and do we see it later? Actually, don't tell me if that happens later, because we'll get to it. But um, this just seems odd for that reason. Um, but then, picking her appearance, it's now established that the Doctor does not pick pick who they become. Because, obviously, it's always a surprise. Like, they played it, played it for, for laugh, right. or, like, she ease attention. She did, because she liked it. She totally picked what she wanted. The only... In, the, in New Who, we see that the Doctor got to pick a regeneration when he became the War Doctor. But that was because of something that the Sisters of Karn were able to help with. That wasn't something that Time Lords do. Sisters of Karn gave him weird. a potion to allow him to regenerate. Right. And then he was also able to pick the form that he needed, which was the War Doctor. So that was like – that's very clear now that that's the way that it works. I don't know at this now, point what happened. Now, we know like just in outside of the story yep. production. Yep. Is Tom Baker already dating – her, I can't remember. I don't Romana think so. Act, and I think at this point, Mary right. Tam was pregnant or had just had the child. But I don't. Is that even true? Because that, she said that that wasn't true. She's the part that I thought was questionable was uh, there was thought that she was not that they asked her back and she said no, and then she actually says in the DVD commentary and other places that no, I was available. They just never asked me. But I don't. Right. I don't. But I didn't she, see any questions she came about on the, the thing pre- where she where she said that they spread that rumor that she was pregnant and that's why she didn't do it. And well, that that's a kind true. of hard thing to fake. But I I wouldn't say that the question was. So did she have a baby at that time? What I'm, what I'm wondering is where's the baby, oh Dan? Gosh. Oh my god! <laughs> the results are check in. Under your chair. Dan Johnson is not the father. Every listener, look under your chair if you see a baby. Um, what? I don't know. I don't. I didn't think that the question was whether or not she was pregnant. It was no, whether or but, not. But they asked they asked her right. back or not due to said pregnancy. That was right. my guess. And she, she, she has said that she would have came back, but who? Again, right. we talked, we we talked about this last time. My point being, it's just, it just seems strange that when they recast Romana, it happens to be the same actress that came from the previous production. Yes, obviously they must have worked with her and enjoyed working with. Her. That's why I didn't know if Tom Baker had already been dating her. He may have said, "Oh, she would be perfect." 
yeah, I, or, or whatever. It just fe- it feels weird that they're back to back episodes. Yeah, and yet she chooses this form. But and they're, on and the, the thing hand, is, like, you can't take sense. someone's form, and she goes, "We're not going back to that planet." Well, right. you don't know where you're going, right? Like, it, it just seems it just seems strange. Yes, it does because they they can't control where the ship lands at this point. Right, still, they have right? the That's randomizer, still, so right. Yeah. But anyway, it, it it's fine, and 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 as a joke, it was you know it has moments where yeah, it was you know, cute. She's tall and whatever. Yeah, yeah the little purple one. The, yeah, right. And then she ends up exactly in Tom Baker's outfit, which is I thought that was adorable. She comes in with a hat pulled over her face, right? But even her new outfit is Tom Baker's outfit. Yep. She's got the scarf. It's just like the pink version yep. of whatever he's She's wearing. She's got the very, very feminine version. So the pink uh, outfit with the white or kind of cream colored, very long scarf as well, which I thought was really cute because they end up kind of doing similar mannerisms with. She ends up doing very similar mannerisms with the scarf that uh, the doctor does as well, which I think is really nice. What did you think, though, when we've seen the doctor regenerate? Um, especially like in, in newer episodes, there's that moment where he's kind of like figuring out who he is. And there's like almost a period where there's a little bit of, to me, a blending of the previous doctor with who the new doctor is going to be. You know, like whenever the 10th yeah. doctor came on, it's like, well, who is he really? And, and kind of, you kind of get to see a little right. comparison. They're not, I, they're not thinking that yeah. part into so, to this. So did you feel that, that Romana too, or this Romana, um, the character was very similar to the Mary Tam portrayal. No. She's constantly screaming this one when she's getting she gets uh taken at one point and she's you well, know, that, hasn't that changed. whole thing that's that that they go right back into. Yeah, I mean that that part definitely stays the same with I mean, that's just what they always do with the companions really. I, right. But I, I didn't there I didn't wasn't a lot of that being, back and forth with them. Well, there was that moment when they're they're still in the TARDIS. They I think they may have landed but they haven't left yet. And he's, they're calling back and forth to each other, and they're in, in separate rooms, so they keep mishearing each other back and forth. Which Is I thought, this when he's pinned down? No, no, no. Oh, no, he's at the that. control. He's at the console. She's in the other room. Oh, right, right. And, they okay. just, and she's, I guess, changing. But they keep shouting back and forth to each other, and each one keeps misinterpreting what the other says back and forth. And I thought it was really cute. That was a very good Douglas Adams yep. sort of moment. Um, I like her, though. Like, there's nothing against her. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I had fallen in love with her mono one, and that's never going to change. Nope. Um, but I, I, it just, it's unfortunate just because it should, it, you could have had a really cool thing if we had her as part of the story, at least in the first episode, and then for the cliffhanger, she gets killed or something, and you could have had, given her a proper transition yeah. instead of just this opening thing. It feels like a mistake. Um, another thing with her, the Romana, they talk about the radiation level, so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. They're sure. now on Scaro. And there's this whole thing about the pills. Oh, no, she didn't take her pill. Yeah. She didn't take her radiation pill. Yeah. They never bring that up again, and she never takes it. I was waiting for her to take it. So is she going to die? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she dies. At the end <laughs> of, uh, yeah, I mean, perhaps the first Romana could have forgotten to take her, her radiation pills. But they make a whole point of saying it, and the doctor realizes it when he's pinned down, like, oh, she didn't take it. I have to remind her takers, yep. Yeah, and we see her kind of sick in the work camp. Yeah, but that's just that's that was a ruse to get, get out of it because yeah, she stops her heart. Um, I don't know because there's there's that, and it also made me think about um, again. I know it's really maybe this is not a worthy thing to do, but there's there's stuff in New Who that talk about radiation and um, the tenth Doctor. Uh, yeah, it's the tenth Doctor first episode with Martha Jones, and they go the the hospital gets taken off onto the moon. And there's the X-ray, and the doctor gets blasted with it, and he kind of shakes the radiation down to his foot and kicks right. it out. He's like, this is like radiation we should play with as children or something. I, I pulled all of that right out of my ear. Um, so I guess maybe just some radiation isn't a big deal because that's kind of how the 10th doctor dies as well. Yeah, it's I don't just know. weird it because seems, they, they, it's played up as, it, as, as a big it's a real threat. But and it, then it's it not at is all. in or they just forget about it yeah. or maybe it was in – uh, the original draft, and then it got rewritten so much, and they forgot the pieces were in it, or whatever. Well, I mean, that, what's funny is, you know, I as part of this, I you know read the Wikipedia, I read the TARDIS Wikia. The TARDIS Wikia always has all these inconsistency stuff. Um, that was never brought up, which is interesting. But that's a really good point. Maybe well, I'll that's how I'll why contribute. we're trailblazers. So we're, we've now yep we fixed brought it up. And, you're and welcome, a Wikipedia Internet. Reference this episode. You're welcome. Um, so we haven't even gotten to the real thing, right? Oh, so we more? have these. Uh, we've got. The um, what are their names? Uh, I said it in the beginning. The 
Mavellans. Oh, yes. yes. Right? Yes. So we get to finally meet yes. the Mavellans. I didn't realize you wanted to jump that right into it. Yes. Well, well they land there. They're, they're exploring. The doctor's pinned down. She goes to get K-9, who, we, who unfortunately is not in this episode. Right. Well, not um, not active in this episode. He's, he appears, but yeah. He does it, yeah. But I guess the the sets or whatever, he they, they weren't able to use them. Yeah. But almost, I think it's in the first episode, he's pinned down, and then all of a sudden these uh, androgynous people that should have been on roller skates appear. Um, I think the roller and skates they are are this, it, it, Yeah, and I loved that whole, their whole thing. Like, I can't believe that this is the only time they're in the show. Can you, like, how okay. did we go? Can you imagine seeing them again now, if they yes. look like this? Yeah, well, they don't have to look exactly no. like this, but they yes, could. They do. Like this is a timeless <laughs> they outfit. Have to like look this, just like this. This they are more relevant now than ever. I think. Like we, you could easily put them into anything. Well, I mean, like, what's interesting? Their features, and they all look like they're chiseled out of uh, you know uh, disco rock. It was fantastic. Well, so they they have this very Egyptian in quotes sure. look because they have the eye makeup. They have the uh, Liz Taylor and Cleopatra braided hair thing. Yes. Uh, Obviously, the Rick James look is in full force at this point. Yeah, um, it's very much like, and I had sent it to you, uh, Buck, uh, Don Cheadle from Boogie Nights during that Christmas party where he's sad <laughs> and he's got the, the white outfit on and that same hair at the piano. Oh, it looks so good. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's a timeless style is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, but, but it's great. Okay, and it's like, except, it's so, except for it's, the fact that we have, so, we have so many robotic alien races. We have the Autons, which we don't we've know seen a bunch of. We've, I, I know, but I'm just, just saying. Stop there. We don't know they're robots at first, and I wanted to know if you did. Oh. Because I actually was, like, surprised like when, when they reveal that. I was like, oh, okay. okay. I didn't realize they were going to be robots. Did you first know? First of all, I, I thought something was up with them along those lines. I thought it was going to be something along the lines of Cybermen. Because when they're sitting in their disco lounge, the white pleather... Uh, and plastic uh, hang space that they've created yeah, for themselves. Everything I want to hang it's, with them. I just like, I want but there was them. one guy. I want to get past those red velvet ropes and just spend some time with some these quality girls. time with these guys. Uh, so the one guy sitting in the guy, well, guys and girls too, because we always do make a point. That's that true. There's there not were a lot of women, and there's it's, it's, everybody's hanging out. Yeah, everyone's hanging out. I guess yeah, there were some, not just some female leads. I mean, obviously, obviously, the leader was a guy, an androgynous man. Um, but regardless, right. so, you're talking about a- a- Angela or Agella, I think, was the space lady. No, I was talking about the, the, the guy, though. He has the, the black end caps on the end of his hair. Um, that would be... The main leader's Commander Sh- Straker. That, yes. No. Uh, That's Command- the guy Commander who was... Cheryl, who's played by Peter Straker. Yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. Now, he was friends with Freddie Mercury, which I found out on Wikipedia. Oh, were they? And Freddie Mercury <laughs> produced one of his albums. I guess he was a singer as well as an actor. How could he not be? They were, like, almost best friends for many years. Or almost truly best friends. I don't know. Oh, man. So, at least we know what our, our out music is for this episode. Yeah, I think we have I to we got put it. that in there. That's a... That's a done deal. Oh, okay, so so going back to whether or not I thought that there were some that they were robots or or something along those lines. So when we see them in their in their space hangout, uh, there's one guy sitting on the uh, leather sectional conversation pit, and he has these headphones on, giant <laughs> headphones. They look very similar to like some Cybermen something or other right. going on. And so you see other ones using those as well. And I thought, oh, maybe they're either they are Cybermen or uh, they're somehow related to the Daleks because they're at the same time. So I did think something was going on. I didn't actually expect it to happen. In fact, whenever they um, they first pull off their battery pack brain thing that's on there... Yeah, they don't have the best defenses. No. Like, they're pretty easy to shut nope. down. Just grab that thing up. But when they first yeah, do that... and they're the Suntaran, like uh, power switch. At least that's on the back, the back of their head. The it's back kind of, of protected. Neck, yeah. This one's just like... That's right here. You could run too fast and it jiggles and falls off. But when the doctor grabs it and they're, they're playing monkey in the middle with it, um, and that um, Mavellan... Am I saying that right? Is kind of I think it's going back and forth trying to grab it and goes into this slow mo acid trip trying to grab yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, is this just a really bad choice on the part of the actor? What the yeah, heck? I, have they I never have the played same... catch before? And then they finally like pass out and he reveals. So I right. was actually they're, they're all their pass out sequences are so ridiculous. Yeah, they're pretty, um, pretty great. And before you know, like you're saying, before you realize they're robots, you're like, is it just terrible? Are they just bad they're at just that? Really and they're horrible. Letting, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, um, but one thing too with the 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 mystery of what these things are was really cool when I think it was the space lady. Uh, Angela or Agala, or I think her name was, Agala, yeah. is crushed by rocks yes. when they're exploring, and you see like the hand, and the doctor knows something that we don't know yep. yet, and you're like, oh, are they zo- like are they coming are they back to life or like are zombies or right. what? What is all of this? And you don't learn about. I that was so until glad. The second episode. I was so glad it wasn't zombies because that would have just been the worst uh, little plot thing to happen where they just happened to mention zombies in the beginning, then they turned out to be zombies. It was related, so it was actually it was fine. But when he says it. When he grabs the hand, you're like, oh, it's cold, so what does that mean? I still right. didn't. Part of me thought something was up, but no, I didn't actually know that they were going to be um, right. robots. And then we do we do learn that they are robots, a race of robots that have been in intergalactic war with the Daleks for, I think they say centuries. Like centuries, It's a very yeah. long time that we've never heard of them. Or I, I'm not aware of them coming up. Maybe they have been name-dropped in the past. I don't think that would be the case, and... and because you know we're jumping around through time and space, There's, we just haven't. Yeah, we haven't done a lot of Dalek episodes either, and we don't really know like where in the galaxy is this. Just a limited area of the galaxy this is happening because Davros, when he gets his computer sphere and kind of sees the history of what's happened, says, you know, this is just the beginning. Now it's going to begin in earnest. So I'm sure. guessing that maybe this is just a very localized, still kind of nightmarish, hellish battle between the two of them conquering planets, but. It's not to the extent that the Daleks later start conquering. Right. One thing that is very strange, when we meet the Mavellans on their space lounge, mm-hmm. the Doctor is like, where are we or whatever? And he says, oh, it's a planet in some X system. Yeah. We think it's called Scar- – we think it's Scaro. You think – you've been locked in an epic battle for centuries, and you're on the home planet of the, of your enemy. Yeah. But you're not quite sure – it would be like World War II. Like, we think we're in – they call it Berlin, but we're not, we're not sure. sure. We like, don't call it that. It, it's a, we, we call it uh, D5 Gamma Z Alpha. It's just a weird uh, – I know that's also very nitpicky, but it was just a weird line for, you know, for two people that for hundreds of years have been battling, and they're not quite sure – Well. Uh, what they call well, not just planet. that because it's such a pivotal, not just pivotal in the plot, but so pivotal to the doctor. Like as soon as he hears it, Scar was like, "Oh crap!" Like everything, all the right. full meaning and implication of what's going on here hits him all before it, you know, kind of comes to us. So yeah, that's a weird way to reveal that. And so, yeah. yeah, and then the, the doctor also can piece together what the Dalek mission is um, that they are looking for Davros. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how he jumps to that, but he can figure that out right away. Well, what would they be and looking for? What would they be you, digging for? And right. he, kind of, he remembers the layout and everything, yes. so he knows where to go. Yeah. And we find Davros just sitting covered in cobwebs, covered like, cobwebs. Uh, something you'd leave in your garage in the back. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, not the same actor. Uh, no. The actor that had played Davros before was on tour. I'm not sure on tour doing what, but he was in Australia. And so they got a new actor who didn't quite fit the mask oh, that they had. Yeah. And the mask was also rotting, I heard. Like, oh, I, I, that that I didn't know. I, I it knew was kind of old, and it was it's sort of falling apart anyway. Yeah. And then it looks so bad. Like, it's just hanging off his face, and the mouth isn't working. Right. It just the mask was like too big for this wreck. actor. So, yeah, when yeah. you see the close-up of the mouth moving, it's just like they just need to pad the inside of the chin or something to let it move. Because, you know, I'm a, a, a mask and makeup expert, so I could have fixed this. Sure. Um, and But just in, in, in very... d- even his delivery and stuff, it was just very low energy. Yeah. Like, it was like... It's not the manic... didn't have, like... The manic the... performance that the previous yes. actor had done at all, which, yeah, which is so the that, real canonical. that definitely hurt this. Is that story. what hurt this? Or the fact that I started laughing out <laughs> loud when I realized that Davros, the actor, was Fred Flintstoning the... Uh, his wheelchair all over the place could wait with his feet yes could yeah. you not? i don't think I, I didn't notice it oh okay well so you guys, can see his feet on the bottom check the show notes <laughs> of the uh of this episode go to the do old doctor who show and go to this episode page because i will have a gif up there that clearly shows davros bouncing in his chair as his feet are moving because he, he does it from the very beginning you can see it was like oh that's weird what's happening there because the the daleks themselves Glide, they they move very smoothly, and he's sitting in the bottom half of a of a Dalek chair, and he, that's not what's happening. There's even one point in like the third or fourth episode where the Davros is kind of monologuing in front of the yeah, the Daleks, and he keeps happening. going back and forth in front of them, and he's you just kicking the whole time <laughs> back and forth. Feet. It's horrifying. 
Oh, I I literally just kept giggling every time he did it. Well, s- well speaking happen. of giggling, I also uh, was hard to not laugh uh, when you get to the circus people. Like the um, so there's a character Tyson, right? So he's a starship engineer who's been kidnapped by the Daleks. He escapes their slave work camp, and he decides that he's going to rescue all the people and make form them into an army. Yes. Which is this ragtag group of. They look like circus performers because there's like a little person running around, yep. like shaking his fist at the sky. A and giant. It's just there's a giant man. Like it's yeah. this weird crew um, that that all fight, and it's it. I I was lo- I was losing it. Yeah, well, so that's when they come into the space lounge. Like space hobo. They look like space hobos. Space hobos coming into yeah. the uh, the space IKEA lounge. Right. Yeah. And just shred the the Mabellans. like. There's, they put up really no, no resistance. I mean, like they have the their only real thing is that clear cylinder that you should put money in when yes. you're grabbing tickets or money mm-hmm. that they just put uh, the explosive Romana two in and at one point I thought that that actually a uh, complete tangent, but that shot where she's in that tube with yeah, the and like nothing detona- the detonation around, around yeah that, that actually yeah, was like was visually cool. really well done. I, um, I don't know if it actually figures into that but this was apparently uh their first use of a steady cam for shooting doctor who um i think the the cinematography and and the sets and everything were top of the line these are yeah, the best. i mean I that, as much as you make fun of the space lounge it's beautiful they did it such a yeah no i detail I so well. you were making fun of the space lounge and i believe i wish i could hang out this is in true the space lounge. this is That's true a, you'd said it with absolutely no sarcasm or irony whatsoever. i had no sarcasm um but the amount of detail um, on that and the the big video screen and there's the little screen set that they obviously clearly put a lot into the sets and the design and the production value. Um, even I guess the costumes, though the Mavellans have expired glow sticks on their shoulders. Like that's a- yeah, I loved it though. Okay, I loved it. Okay. It's all right. Hey, it's no, okay. it's fine. I may not it's have fine. the taste level that uh, that you do, Dan, mm-hmm. but I would. I think that's a perfect Halloween costume. Oh right no no no! This go. is what I'm going to be for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> that much is decided. Um, um, we do we also we talked about the crotch grab, or you talked to me about it, where you sent you post I could a not. gif, an animated gif. Yeah, um, that's towards the end. So you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, that's that was that was amazing. We have the Mavellan that was uh, sent to guard uh, the device. What the heck was that device called? It was going to incinerate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what was that device? It was like um, it was their super weapon that was supposed to was supposed to burn the air yeah, or something, or yeah. turn the air into. Uh, it would just detonate and, and basically incinerate yeah. the, the planet. Air molecules. Uh, yeah, you look for that while I. Uh, anyway, so he was sent to guard this because they didn't want to, they wanted to make sure that if the Daleks found it, uh, they wouldn't be able to prevent it from going off. So this guy's there. Uh, this is when Romana is um, kind of slow wrestle grabbing the guy from <laughs> trying to get to it, God. and he knocks her down. She, she grabs him. She grabs his crotch in the crotch and yanks him down. <laughs> And I gotta say, that's a nice change of pace in a in a companion to really just go for the crotch yes. grabs. And w- while you say say crotch grab, it was called the Nova device. The Nova device, and it changed the air molecules uh, and made them flammable. That's right. And it would destroy all life on the planet. Right. Anyway, crotch grab that happened. Yeah, that crotch made me happy. There was a, some other some interesting things. So these Daleks, did they look? substantially different to you than the last time we saw them? I didn't notice them. that they, they, they looked different. And I know a lot of people have complained about this episode because it says that the Daleks are robots, I guess, as opposed to creatures with travel travel machines. I don't well, remember no. that the being a line in The doctor specifically says here. that they were that they were. I didn't think so, organic. I didn't think so that, either. That's but that's what, that, like, if you go to the Wikipedia page and you look at the reception area, people have criticized this uh, because there's an implication that the Daleks were now robots. I don't no. remember getting that from the episode, but enough people have said it that maybe there is a line or something in it that suggests that. In fact, I feel there's the opposite. I think that the Doctor cl- um, uh, clearly states that they were organic or or are organic inside the thing. So, no, I, I think... I think you need to edit that uh, Wikipedia entry. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm banned Dan's from editing. Counterpoint. I'm banned from editing Wikipedia anymore. You guys know why. Of the, you guys know why. Because of that thing that happened. That um, no, that's that's a good point. I don't I don't know why they would get that. But but, no, go, but you were going to make a point that you, is the design different. Yeah, is it seemed to me like the balls on the outside of the uh, hey hey uh, uh, the outside of the uh, the the Daleks those were 
black, and I don't remember them being black previously, but I might be confusing them with the new Who versions because there's many iterations that way as well. So they just they seemed to look a little bit different to me. The one thing that I did notice that maybe it was there before and I just never saw it, and or maybe it's never been there since, when they're shooting from their... The cleaner, the pipe yes. cleaner that comes out? Yes. That it looks is, like a little party favor. I had favor. that in my like, notes, too. I was like, oh, I like that little cleaning rag. So in, a, I, I, in addition, so just to, to clarify for people old, watching. That's old, though, I think. What's that? I think that's old. Like, I went back oh. to, like, one of the original Dalek episodes, and I think they also had that, had that weird thing out come out. So what it looks like, for f- people to remember, um, out of their, their gun area when they're shooting not just the the laser special effect that's kind of added after the fact there's a practical effect where this thing flickers out of it and it just reminds me of those little party horns that you would blow and it's the streamers come out so it was doing that practically and then on top of that they added the laser effect i had just never noticed it before and they do so many close-ups of it in this episode that it it seems it really very seemed odd. exceptionally ridiculous. Yes, yeah, really, really strange. Um, I will, I will look and see if I can find that still that I saw or that video clip I saw from one of the older. That would be cool episodes Just to see compare that. I can uh, recreate it because I think it, it was maybe something before they had. I guess the effects of just drawing the lasers on, they would have something to show it's firing, and they just kept it in this. I, it was I strange. Get, I don't know. It was very strange. I'll look. I'll look through it. Just to make sure that we are correct. One thing, speaking of Daleks, mm-hmm. and why wouldn't we? This is Destiny of the Daleks. There's a point in it where Davros is waiting for a Dalek warship to come yep. and meet him, and it's like six hours. Yes. What happened to the ship? Like, the ship never comes? Isn't it still on its way? It's probably still on its way, but he's been captured before then, so I don't know what's going to happen. They sort of just forget about that. Like yeah. they, they, uh, it's on its way. He's they destroy gonna... the Mavellans, or I guess the Mavellans are all destroyed. That's the one thing, too, that Mavellans are become sort of an enemy, too, of the Doctor. They're not the good people that you think they are necessarily in the beginning. They're sort of ambiguous in all ways. <laughs> but are they all destroyed? I don't... Like, do they well, the Mavellan ship get takes out of again. it? Oh, that's because they... No, that's right. That was what's-his-name took the ship to go back yes. to Earth. Yeah, that was the... Um, yeah. The circus people. Well, I wouldn't assume that all of them are. I don't think the entire Mavellan force was on that planet. So they're still fighting in the... Yeah, yeah so they're still... F- they're still fighting up there in the sky someplace. Yeah, it, would it have just to was be. weird that they have, like, you have this timer set. It's like six hours, and then the Dalek warship is coming. Yeah, I don't think it matters. just leave the planet, and I guess they go to an empty planet. Yeah, it didn't matter. Davros is frozen and then taken to Earth He's going to be taken to Earth for his crimes against... All so I'm interested to see if there is a trial of Davros or if there's like there's only one way to find out. Yeah, what happens there? Just to watch more who. Um, there was speaking of like uh, speaking of this episode as we are. There was a moment when uh, the Doctor is running through um, the top side of, of Scarrow, and he's cl- kind of clambering up a hill, and his his hand goes into a crevice, and he feels around in there and pulls out silly putty. This big oh, lump yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. flesh. Yes. Why? I, it's just <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's just this giant collared mutant silly putty that he's pulling out of there. Like, and he says something like, "Like this has this has helped him figure something out. Like now he knows what, how to do whatever he's." It just seems, yeah, really, and then he grabs it and balls it up, and then throws it on the ground. And there's well, a shot you would of do it, with something like, like that. Sure, put it in your pocket for later, or just find your favorite comics and just put it on there, and uh, you can take the comic ooh, with you and then stretch them out, make Yay. Andy Cap's face get gigantic. Yeah, no, it's just one random note gross. that I have. Um, Tyson, who we said was a Starship engineer who leads the circus people away. Yep. He was pro- uh, deaf, yeah, or yeah. deaf at least in one ear during the production, which. I wouldn't have known. He uh, could read I, lips I read and uh, ran a school for the deaf, uh, an acting school for the deaf. That's so, pretty yeah, impressive. That was incredible. Good on you, uh, to Seth, who's Tyson, whose name I don't know, actor's name. Still amazing. Um, so what else do we have? We have uh, we talked about Terry Nation writing this, and there's too many rewrites. And I also looked up that he ended up writing on MacGyver, so that's something. Did he bring the Daleks the to Mac- MacGyver? I don't recall those. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like uh, the last episode of season five. Right, you can only get it on the the Blu-ray box. How are you feeling about the Daleks at this point in the series? Um, I'm fine with them. I like. I, I mean, them to I be like such a, the, a, a an insubstantial villain. 
or or over yeah, well, over they, they can't go up steps it, like it's over inflated so the steps thing the, at least they, they kind of make one joke where the doctor's getting away climbs mm-hmm. up the rope and is out of the yeah, out of the so air vent if you're such a superior race why don't you c- come up and get me so there's that and that's funny because that comes up in uh new who for doc the ninth doctor when we'd see the daleks return and they actually do go up the stairs so that was awesome um but uh but as a race of like these master villains to be afraid of, I mean, I especially feel that more in the current series. Like I'm just over them. They, no, he, the doctors I, defeated them any number of ways, and they and they have so many limitations. Not least of which is just friggin' shoot him, just shoot him, stop talking. Well, how do you? Yeah, how do you do another Dalek story when you have the Mavellans that you could just write about? I, that's all forever. I would write for the rest of my life. Is is no, in terms of like all the villains that we've dealt with, yeah. they are not on the top of my list. No. I still but love them. Are, I still love Davros. But they are in the in terms of like uh, who Doctor Who uh, fans and canon. Like yeah, they are extremely the biggest. popular. And I just right. they don't do anything for me anymore. Like they were definitely very scary. And I can as I can see in like sixty three or the the beginning times that we see them. Like wow, that is actually terrifying. The voice you don't actually see them very much, which makes it even like at first anyway makes it even scarier. So that's that's cool, but now it's just like oh, it's the same thing over and over again, and they just they can only wheel around on flat surfaces, and I don't know, and yeah, I just I'm kind of well, I think just the idea that it. they kill so indiscriminately and they just mindless, but they don't. That, they we hear well, they that they should. do. I mean, that's that, that's like what uh, you know, except for when the master comes back later be. in you know New Who and and they actually take over the entire planet, and that that happens like when the Ark comes and opens up the the rift and they all. Come and take up plan. Like that's that's what they should be doing all the time. The stuff in the time war. That's what they should be doing all the time. But anytime you actually see them in an episode where it's like focused on them, it's just a whole lot of of talking and letting the doctor kind of talk around things. When I don't know. Anyway, I love them. I will right, always well, love them. But bring this whole not, Destiny of the Daleks uh, podcast to a screaming halt. They're just halt. not just, my favorite. Hit the side of a mountain. The Mavellans are now my favorites. No, but I like something. No, like I the love silence them. I, is, I, I don't know I like why that. we don't have. I just can't believe that they've never. They've never come up. Well, like it's just we do have a new showrunner coming up, uh, so maybe we can start a, a Twitter slash yeah. litter writing campaign to bring them back. Well, and I imagine there's probably uh, novels and comics and uh, big finish stuff that features them, right? How, I mean, how it can't could be not that be? The, everyone has turned their back on these. Uh, if there's big finish stuff, seventies glam thing. Oh no! If there's big finish stuff, um, the audio stories. I'm hoping that the entire backing track for that is just like Bee Gees the entire time. Just for no reason. You're just for no get, reason. Get that in the background. All right. So do we have anything else we want to talk about with Destiny of the Daleks? Overall, it sounds like we both liked it with a couple of, you know. It, it, even the caveats are just like small nitpicky things or just funny. I just I just found for me. A lot me, of people hate this no. episode. Like it, it's a, you know, I think the general consensus is it's not good. It's a but huge, I, in terms of ratings, it was a huge episode as we talked about before. Um, I thought it was fantastic i i liked the yeah, I, liked I liked the the individual actors and characters the twist that they're aliens that there's yet another race that's fighting uh the daleks for superiority besides just the the time lords or cybermen or, or whatever else right, it's something new it's something which new is always, which is cool they don't look good. like anything else i mean their costume design as much as it's kind of silly in a lot of ways and it is it is very silly um it's still really well executed um you know the 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 quilted tunic they have over top all the little they're, doodads their yeah. silver necklaces their leggings uh, their androgynous leggings silly for you amazing for me amazing Dad. the stuff amazing of dreams for me. oh one other small little thing i don't know if i mentioned this but each one of these was referred to as episode one episode two episode three episode four and they hadn't done that since green death Next story, they go right back to uh, parts, right? They yeah. call them part one, part yeah. two, whatever. I don't know why that was the case. Strange. Yeah. Um, which the next story is going to be City of Death, something I have seen a few times. Uh, it's a great one, but I won't spoil my opinion on it. Oh, Dan, right, this then. is the first time you're seeing it? That is correct. Cool. So that's next. Yep. Um, unless there's anything else you want to talk about Destiny of the Daleks, I we could we, probably wrap it up. I think we got it, guys. Um, if you want to let us know what you thought of Destiny of the Daleks, you can email us at the old Doctor Who Show at gmail.com. You can contact us on Twitter at egrissom for me or at, Dan J N J. At Dan J N J on Twitter. Uh, you can visit us on Facebook at 
facebook.com slash T-O-D-W-S, I believe. Yeah. Uh, or go to the old Doctor Who show.com and click on the Facebook link. Uh, their schedule is up there. It shows all of the episodes that we're doing. Uh, we've we've added one thanks to a user, or a user, a listener. Mm-hmm. Just that work stuff creeping in there. Start talking about users. Sorry, buddy. Uh, a listener, if there's something you see on the list that you, that, or rather, is there something that's not on the list that you want to see on the list, please, please, God, email <laughs> us and let us know. We will add it. Oh, and, and uh, while you're there, our obligatory, our, sorry, our, our obligatory update on streaming. Um, oh, yeah. No update on streaming. No. <laughs> so, so you can find the shows on iTunes, Amazon. Check the links there if you want to go to the Amazon uh, page through the old Doctor Who show.com. Yeah, please do because we get a little bit of that uh, a taste, as they say, in the, uh, in the back corners of Nightmare Alley. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm pretty sure that, you know what? I wonder if this works. So if you go to the old Doctor Who show.com, click on schedule. Mm hmm. Click on any one of the DVDs, and you go to Amazon. I think if you buy something, even if it's not Doctor Who, once you're in and it's passing <laughs> along that parameter with our, our ID, I think we get something for we that. We are supposed to. Yeah, that's great. So hey. if you're buying something on Amazon anyway and you want to go through, I won't stop you. Nope. And I think we'll get a little bit of something. A little something for us. I'll keep this show uh, yeah. going. So what else? Anything else, Dan? Should we just... Uh... I think we're uh, we're done. I think we're done there, folks. Yep. So City of Death on September 28th is what we have coming up. And then <laughs> we're still in Tom, Tom Baker country for quite some time. We've got for the, the Leisure Hive, Full Circle, State of Decay, Warrior's Gate, Keeper of... Uh, Trocken? Trocken, right? Yeah. We I think we must have mispronounced Thanks, it or something... Uh, last time, what I say, Traken? I think that's I right, know. yep. Traken. Uh, and then, finally, uh, Legopolis. Legopolis. Lego, Lego Lolopolis. Uh, Logopop. Logopolis. And then we're finally out of the Tom Baker area. Uh, era. Hey, did we mention that we got a new review on the iTunes store? No, I didn't even know oh, we did. hey, folks. Please let us know. We Is got, it a written one? We got one. Uh, another five-star review. Thank you, uh, Tigwin, oh. T-I-G-G-W-I-N, oh, exciting on uh, August 31st of 2016. Uh, Tigwin says... Way to close down August. As a completionist, I'm watching All Who in order from 1964 onward. Holy God, wow. that's amazing. I know Dan that, and I had talked about doing that, and Dan shot I shot that down because I didn't want to do it until I was 105 years old. I thought maybe let's hit some highlights. Um, uh, Tigwin continues to say, I love this podcast, exclamation point, who doesn't? Uh, I've binge listened to all of them and always look forward to the next episode. They are funny, and I find their walkthroughs astute and highly entertaining. You know what, Tigwin? I find you astute and highly entertaining. Yeah, you're um, and uh, Tigwin also highly recommends this podcast. So if you want to leave another review on iTunes to help other people find our classic Who nonsense, uh, that would be a great way to do it. Um, it also brightens our days and gives me goosebumps. So that's uh, that's super exciting for all of you. Sure. Yeah. So that, uh, as Dan said, rate us on iTunes. Share us on whatever. Social media. Social media, whatever. You know, we're still... Oh, also relatively unknown. Here's here. the thing that I've been doing that I enjoy so much. Um, hit the Doctor Who that? page for the past uh, few episodes. You'll see a bunch of gifts, typically about things that we're talking about on the show. I'm just really making lots of gifts for fun. So uh, yeah, if you guys like take those, them and take them, them and do what you will with them. But if you see a thing like, you know what happened when this, then this, this, that would be an amazing gift. I'll be more than happy to make that for you because it's super enjoyable. So we'll give you guys an announcement, a heads up uh, beforehand when the show drops uh, with a funny little thing to look at as well anyway i think that does it for us that's it we will uh talk to you in three weeks one way one way talk one way talk at you in three weeks talk at you in three weeks and uh all of you out there please stop making fun of eric's hair and don't beat him up yeah what are you gonna beat me up for Uh, that's my job fight anybody that's my job guy doesn't like my hair eric it's time for your my hair wasn't even any there's nothing wrong with it It was just like sometimes (laughs) sticking up or whatever i'm sorry i brought this up again i'm so sorry to bring that's my hit hit the button so mad the the next day i was just just so mad um but yeah what are you gonna do (laughs) all right anyway uh thank you all and we love you i love you Bye. Bye. i'm very excited now and i'm not gonna let this podcast end because right about now i'm gonna 
put in that guy, that actor's song. I have no idea what it's going to sound oh, it's gonna like. Be great. I, I, it's gonna I, did, be great. I knew he was a singer. I knew Freddie Mercury produced the record or whatever. Well, it's gonna be I have fantastic. no idea what it's going to be. Great. It's going to be great. The only things we heard him say were on cards we read too slow. The man who made them speak was right down piano Joe. It was the only life that he knew. Joe's mooned and crooned and talking pictures came to town. Hokey Carmichael played a tune, it really brought Joe down. And Busby Barkley clinched the deal, and all the flicks had sound. Joe took his life one night, they say that he was drunk.